Good morning, welcome to Morning Outlook. This is Kim speaking on Friday the 28th of September. So looking at the euro dollar and well, um, yesterday we saw it break the daily trend line and close below it. So at the moment, um, it's a bit of a switch to sort of the, the bearish scene, um, I say at the moment, <laughs> carefully because it has got some support coming up. I was just wanting to check here and you've got this daily 50 34 which would be seen as being targets uh, maybe for this morning today we'll see how it reacts off of those because if it starts bouncing well it, it may well uh, not necessarily move right the way up to where it was but uh, get back towards its daily pivot it is quite ugly in some respects of what we're seeing here but it has put some divergence in on the 60 minutes but uh, the daily pivot is there, so it's not masses or oh, miles away, sh I should say, at 16.79. Um, could could become a target. It just needs some support, and well, support may be um, a combination of those moving averages. I'm just checking. This is at 15.99 or uh, around about 1.16. Um, okay, well they're they're not quite so low as that. So we'll just see how it 1.16.13. So see how it reacts uh, to those uh, uh, key moving averages uh, it, it, to me it's it's moved into a bearish zone for now because it's broken the trend line it's uh, it, it could well find support and retrace uh, but um, really my preference actually would almost be to be selling into uh, any uh, retracements but uh, we'll see how it, as I say see how it reacts if, it, if we get some sort of signs of a bounce off those that moving averages I may try it trade it back towards the pivot uh, otherwise um, I'll just be standing aside this morning I think um, so look at cable Again, quite big move through the Asian session. Now, cable has put a, a bearish pivot swing on the dailies there. Um, just at this moment, testing the, or just has tested the daily 21. Now, the the trend line we'd be drawing across here would be um, well out of the way, but it, it certainly would have cro uh, broken sort of some near-term trends. It uh, broke broke through its four hourly trend um, over the last couple of days. It's well, if we had drawn from the from the lows uh, to the left of the screen here, right the way across, it would have also broken that level now. So it is at the moment we are seeing dollar strength through these markets. Um, it's not just a pound and a euro, but we've we've seen strength coming through. Where to with this? Well, if we don't bounce off of where we are at the moment uh, on the dailies, there that four hourly two hundred looks uh, inviting short term similar picture to the euro in terms of a uh, bit of divergence kicking in here um, in fact looking at that as a bit of hidden R RSI divergence as well um, maybe yeah I mean the the uh, st strength of this move pulling up is equal, almost as equal as that move previously and well um, we, we, we could see even a larger correction Again, it's just a case of finding whether we find it, see any support coming off these levels to target back towards the daily pivots. But otherwise, uh, I'm really looking at uh, the bearish side of both these markets. Maybe easier on the euro at the moment, but with the lack of Brexit conversation coming through at the moment, uh, the pound has settled down a little bit. Okay, dollar yen. Uh, looking at the big picture here, so, bullish engulfing yesterday. I mean, it had a bullish, in, a bearish engulfing the day before. Um, uh, on Wednesday, it was left with a bearish engulfing. Um, I was uh, almost had about that. It was, it was bullish, <laughs> and it, it did. It, it, it shoved up there. Still in this bullish mode here. There's, there's plenty of reasons why the uh, yen may just continue to soften anyway. Um, it's maybe finding some resistance into its weekly R2 where it's sitting here where it's certainly shown signs of doing so at the moment um, is this a, a bigger reversal possibly it's got a daily pivot below we may see a correction at least back to that and well it has got a bit of divergence over this time frame as well double divergence in fact so um, yep we could see a bigger a bigger correction to that 
longer, bigger picture. I'm not totally convinced the short side's finish. Oh, sorry, the um, long side for the US dollar, short side and the um, yen's finished. It's the sentiment's still quite bearish on the yen, and I think, well, um, from the bigger traders, I think it's still got possible upside there. But uh, we'll see as we run through. This is the monthly uh, R2 it's in at the moment here, so we'll see how it goes. Okay, I'm going to throw the Euro Yen in. This is uh, has provided some reasonable moves of late. Um, but uh, actually I'm saying that it's actually also selling off at the moment. It's uh, maybe uh, we, if we see a correction, we'll see uh, a bit more accelerated correction. I, I was looking for a long yesterday. It uh, finally hit target but pipped me for one pip. But uh, that's how we go. At the moment this is looking bearish. It's looking like it could roll. Uh, further south, if that yen's coming down and the, uh, um, the euro's coming down against the uh, dollar. Well, um, it could just get a bit more uh, bang for your buck in terms of what it's actually doing here. It's the reason why I've been looking at it again lately. Uh, it rewards, um, you just need slightly bigger stops, obviously. But there we are, um, that's uh, looking like it's on for its S1 at the moment. Aussie dollar. Quick look on the Aussies. Uh, okay, another bearish pivot swing. It's well, maybe trying to find some support where it is. I can't see what it's finding support off of because it's certainly not the uh, uh, the daily moving average. It's completely still in a bearish zone for me, um, and it's broken through its four hourly uh, uh, channel. Um, say channel. Well, it may have been a channel, but its four hour trend line. It's broken properly there and uh, uh, does look. Um, relatively weak. It's a pity it hasn't come up to a daily pivot because that would have been quite a nice short point there but uh, it may still pitch up after 8 o'clock. Need to just be a bit careful with this but uh, as I said yesterday it is such a slow mover. I mean we saw the move uh, in on that 6 o'clock candle yesterday and then for the next 6 hours, it, or 2, 4, yeah 6 hours it did nothing. Uh, okay it finally broke down and rolled over but it can be um, but a bit trying to like wade through glue um, so it's not my favorite intraday trading currency as I keep saying um, Canadian dollar it was very tempting yesterday a couple of times I have to say Canadian dollar the, the, the uh, robber of many people's purses well yes they did shove up a little bit more but pulled back corrected itself it's um, Possibly not so bearish against the US dollar as many of these pairings. Um, it's well looking actually at the moment from this four alley that it could continue in this route. We'll see, but uh, just sort of ball flagged. So um, got daily pivot above, May maybe short lived. It's pretty close by, so um, it'd be interesting to see how it reacts off that pivot. Um, if we can break through, well, we could be back on for yesterday's double top sort of territory R1 zone. Um, it hasn't you quite yet put a new low in. Um, it's put if it does break this uh, current low, this 50 MA here, it'll put lower high in, and maybe we'll see more to the downside on that. Okay, uh, that's pretty much that. News wise, uh, we've got the current account this morning at 9:30 for the UK. It's not a great mover. Um, GDP for Canada at 1:30 because it's out on a monthly basis, not a great mover. Actually, uh, we've got the uh, UK GDP data out as well. Sorry, I should should have said that as well. But because it's now moving to a quarterly basis, it seems to have less uh, less bang for your buck. Um, we'll see how it r rides out over the coming months. But uh, for now, that's also at 9.30, I should have said. Um, it's even rated low on uh, Forex Factory, that's saying something. Um, aside of that, uh, we've got some speakers, 220, we've got a uh, MPC uh, member speaking, Ramsden. He can often uh, voice some personal opinions on what, what's happening in course and volatility due to speak at the Society of Professional Economic Economists. That must be gripping, that one. Um, sorry if you're an economist. Okay, um, what a lovely Friday afternoon, eh? Uh, that's it. Um, but the, don't forget, we're at the end of the quarter as well. We may see some a bit of volatility, a bit of final adjustments being made in portfolios, etc. So um, as we f finish the quarter off. So there we are. Have a great day. Bye for now.